En route to New Orleans, we cross the Mississippi River by way of this magnificent $13 million structure, named the Huey Long Bridge, in honor of the late Huey P. Long, former governor of Louisiana, to whom New Orleans is largely indebted for this wonder of modern engineering, which characterizes the indomitable spirit of the people of Louisiana and indicates the great strides that are being made in that state toward economic recovery. A few miles from the Huey Long Bridge on the Mississippi lies the city of New Orleans, metropolis of the South, with over a half million inhabitants and fourth largest city and land area in the United States. Over $200 million have been expended in developing the port and harbor of New Orleans with its eight miles of modern wharves containing the world's largest shipside cotton warehouse and the country's largest coffee and banana terminals. Long before the days of the railroad, the river steamboats were the Louisiana planters' chief contact with the outside world. And even then, New Orleans was among the foremost harbors in America. Although it is situated over 100 miles from the mouth of the Mississippi, New Orleans claims the distinction of being the second port of the United States in handling foreign commerce, and each day brings to its busy docks ships that fly the flags of many nations. Thousands of ocean-going vessels from all over the world clear from the port of New Orleans every year, while barges and passenger boats plying up and down the Mississippi and its tributaries use it as their terminus. This unique device unloads bananas from ship to wharf at the rate of 2,500 bunches an hour, and we are told that the port of New Orleans normally handles about 23 million bunches of bananas annually. Cotton, that all-important commodity around which the history of the southern states has revolved, is one of Mother Nature's most useful contributions to mankind, its history dating back thousands of years to the banks of the Nile, where the ancient Egyptians gathered cotton fiber to be used in the fabrics of their pharaohs. It is an interesting fact that over three-fifths of the world's supply of cotton is grown in the southern regions of the United States, and no small amount of that passes out into the international marts of trade by way of the Port of New Orleans. And now, as we gaze upon the great city of New Orleans, we learn that it was founded in 1718 by the French and named in honor of the Duke of Orleans. After 54 years of French rule, it was ceded to Spain and later returned to France. Finally, in 1803, it joined the United States as the part of the famous Louisiana Purchase, and it presents itself today as a modern metropolis flourishing under the stars and stripes. The chief thoroughfare of New Orleans is Canal Street, one of the widest main streets in the world, and the hub around which revolves most of the city's modern activities. Less than a century ago, there flowed here a crudely built canal, accommodating a motley array of boats that passed to and fro with variegated cargoes and sleepy skippers. But all that has vanished now, except the name, which still clings to Canal Street. Even in modern New Orleans, we observe occasional scenes which remind us of Paris and the days when Louisiana belonged to France. At one time, it was thought the soil of New Orleans was too soggy to support a building of more than two or three stories. But that theory has been completely exploded by modern engineers who have erected in perfect safety such buildings as the Roosevelt Hotel, one of the finest in the South.
The new charity hospital, an imposing structure built with state and federal funds obtained during Huey Long's regime, is operated by the state and contains free clinics for all races, regardless of color or creed. Tulane University includes among its various departments one of the world's most thorough and up-to-date medical schools with a record for graduating a praiseworthy number of America's most eminent physicians and surgeons. New Orleans is particularly proud of its suburban homes, ranging in architectural design from the baronial stability of a European mansion or the smug security of a better class American residence to a less pretentious dwelling such as this one in which resided Huey P. Long, the late governor and senator from Louisiana, whose plan for sharing the nation's wealth caused a great stir in national politics and created for him a turmoil of political events which ultimately brought about his assassination at the very height of his hectic career. The modern cemeteries of New Orleans are world famous for their artistic beauty and the good taste by which their monuments are designed. the city has developed a powerful drainage system which has lowered the water table by several feet, making it possible for normal underground burials, New Orleans continues to inter its dead above ground, more out of reverence and tradition than necessity. The New Orleans airport, built in 1935 at a cost of three million dollars, is regarded as one of the most strategically situated military as well as commercial airports in North America. No visit to New Orleans would be complete without observing its nightlife. When the lights of Canal Street radiate with luminous colors and the city takes on a gaiety not unlike that of Paris, but truly typical of modern New Orleans, one of the finest and most progressive cities in the United States.